Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to have some coffee with you guys. This is uh, the third follow-up to the uh, caregiver's morning. Uh, some One morning that uh, you wake up and it lasts for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, I have said before, my dad, my father, 90-year-old almost, I found him on the floor one morning. Long story short, sent him to the hospital. A lot of issues there at the hospital, but they didn't find any issue, any 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 pr real problem. Uh, I thought it was a UTI, probably urine urinary tract infection. Turned out it wasn't. Um, and during that week long stay, my dad went through so much. They said he was doing good with the physical rehab. Uh, he was fully hydrated again. Then he suddenly had pneumonia. And and then it was, that that was a, wasn't a pneumonia, it was a cold. And, and then they said finally, you know, it was just a viral infection like a flu. I I still have no idea what the final determination was. I don't think there was one. I think what I did was I followed the doctor's instructions or advice that if if your loved one falls or, or they're on the floor and can't get up, you send them to the hospital. And I did that, and I thought it was going to be maybe for one, you know, we'd go, they'd figure it out, maybe hydrate him overnight if that was the issue, and he'd come home. But no, they kept him a whole week, and then he couldn't uh, walk enough. His legs kept giving out, so I got him the uh, wheelchair, finally, and got him, I was able to get him from the car into the apartment. Very weak after a week, after a week, uh, that's probably wonder why they call it that. Probably why they call it that is because uh, he was in bed for a week, up very little, few amount of time doing physical rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. Uh, but mostly in bed, mostly asleep, barely eating, which I didn't find out till the last day. My dad has a healthy appetite, so I don't. That that's a warning sign right there. Any case, gotta be sure before you send your uh, loved one, the person you're caregiving for, to the hospital because hospital stays, the longer they are, or for more than forty-eight hours, can bring on all sorts of other issues, unintended consequences. Especially when you're dealing with the elderly and people with dementia and Alzheimer's. You, gotta, you almost have to be a diagnostician. On top of doing all the laundry, all the cooking, cleaning, uh, other housework, doing the grocery shopping, transporting people to appointments. It's so much on top of everything else that you also have to be to know what's going on with the person you're caregiving for. And there are levels to that. My level is my dad's not a, not a hard thing to deal with, not a hard person to deal with. Usually. My sister... I'm going to use her as an example. She's a very difficult person to to deal with, to caregive for. And she's in a nursing home because she cannot live on her own, although she thinks she can and wants to be back into her place alone. But she's in a wheelchair. She's falling out of the wheelchair and being on the floor for hours and hours. 
lets her phone run, all the batteries run out on her phone, or disconnect the phone, or, uh, she needs a caregiver, but she also needs a, a more advanced caregiver than me. I mean, I can help somebody take their medications, I can help people eat, or cook their food. I'm not going to spoon feed anyone. But I can't really help my sister bathe and clean herself after, you know. It's a long story. I had thought at one time, and over several times, in fact, that since it's not too difficult for me to caregive for my father, and I hate the idea that my sister is in a nursing home, I would get a bigger apartment. Now, we downsized to a smaller place, a smaller apartment about 12 years ago. I've been caregiving for my dad for a long time. Um, but but we had a two-story two story townhouse, and it had the stairs in it, and that was becoming an issue for my father. So we downsized to a smaller place, and we got rid of all our extra furniture and all that. Didn't need it anymore. He got down to a minimal uh, hoarding situation. I thought and have thought about getting a bigger place to move my sister in with us. Like I said, because my father's not too difficult to caregive for. And you think to yourself as a family caregiver, well, if I can do this so, and it's not too difficult... It won't be much more to add somebody else. Just cook a little bit more, do a little bit more laundry, buy more food. Now, never think that way. Caregiving for one person is enough for one person. Or two people. Because it's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And just because you can care for one person doesn't mean you can care for two. Especially, it doesn't balance out if this one's easy, this one's hard. And my dad might be easy currently. That may change at any time. My sister's very difficult to, do, to have to care give for. More needy. And more argumentative and not participating in her own recovery put it that way there are people like that so don't ever let family push you into the idea that if you're caring for one you can care for two might have a, a, your mother and your father both living in the same house, and they both have Alzheimer's and dementia. And if you've ever been a caregiver through that, you understand that's a lot of work, and one's worse than the other. But they're together so that, uh, and, and, and it's a normalized situation. So some things are easier if this person's easy, this one's hard. But moving in a sibling who's not lived with you in 60 years, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. So don't do that. Don't uh, assume that you can do two as easily as one. It's not the same thing. So I got my dad back home. He's doing better now, but he's but he's more frail than he was before the hospital. I've talked to the VA. They're going to be sending out some nursing assistance for me to help him uh, do some things and do self self catheter. Uh, they sent him home with a catheter, Foley catheter, and. And he was tripping over it, falling onto the coffee table. Could barely walk with that extra weight. Didn't know what it was, the bag was, or the hose. Kept forgetting that. Why is this here? What is it doing? What is it? 
And so, but I took him the other day and uh, on Friday and had him and talked to the doctors, his primary care physicians, and uh, they agreed that it has to go. This cannot remain. It's too much of a hazard for him. It's too much of a stress and a strain, and the chances of a UTI on top of that are much more increased when you have a catheter in. So it's better you not have that. He didn't need it to start with, so I, that's another thing I got an issue with. But it is what it is. They got him home, and they're going to be uh, send them, sending some nursing help. Thank God the VA is going to pay for it. And also physical rehabilitation are going to come out and do, work with them to build them up a little bit uh, for a while. They're going to come out for a while to build them up. And if I can get him back to where he can exercise with me like we've been doing, because he can't do it right now. He's too weak. He's too frail. He's put a bent over a little bit. So it's going to be a while before he gets back to where he was. If we can get back to that point. Physically where he was before the hospital stay. And that's just part of the deal. Part of the game of life. The card game of life. The roller coaster. A lot of ups and downs. Some loops. We go through this, and it's a, as family caregivers, and it's a big stress and strain on us. I tell you, thank God for coffee. People have told me, you need to drink green tea, chamomile, and that'll relax you. I don't need to be relaxed. I need to be hyper and alert because things can change on a dime. You should do yoga. No, I'm not going to do yoga. I can barely eat yogurt. We need some time off, but when you're a family caregiver and with no help from anybody else in your family or your friends don't show up to help or even visit, that's a hard thing on you. It wears down your loved ones, but it really wears down you because you're on the clock all the time. Never, it never ends. Not like going to work and go and they get to go home and decompress and detach. You can't do that when you're a family caregiver. But I'm willing to make that sacrifice of my own personal life because my father has much problems as we've had between each other in our lives, as much backstory like we all have with our parents or other relatives. I don't want him to be in a nursing home unless it's 100% necessary. I don't want him to die laying in a bed in a nursing home. I visited my sister many times in the nursing home. I've been in nursing homes before, walking around. And it's heartbreaking to see these older people just sleeping their last bit of life away. Laying in a bed. That will not happen to my dad. It will not happen to my dad. It may happen to me one day because I, 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 none of my family are going to care give for me if something happens to me. I know that. I have no children. So, if I had children, they probably wouldn't be talking to me. That's part of life. I'm willing to give up a little bit of my older life, make sure my father is taken care of in his last days. 
I lost my mother in 1999. I don't want to lose my father the same way that she passed. I don't want to go through that again. In a hospital room. I don't want to do that. I don't want to lose my sister either. Uh, I don't want her dying in a, in a nursing home, but... If she won't care for herself, I can't care for her. Care give for her. If she cannot make that effort. Plus, like I said, if you've got two people, you're caregiving for, and you think it's going to even out and equal out, it won't. Something will happen, and it, you'll just, you'll kill yourself is what I'm saying. It won't kill your body, it'll kill your mind. It'll kill your emotions. And it's just too much. I have enough on my plate. I definitely have enough on my plate. More days than I need. Anyway, thank you for uh, 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 hanging in with me here. And uh, I'll see you again soon.